Welcome back to the program. Joining me this morning on our panel of politicians, the Liberal Senator Mitch Byfield and the Labor MP Andrew Lee. Good morning to both of you. Mitch Byfield, let's start with you this morning. You would have heard Mr Swan there in that interview accusing the coalition of talking down the economy. Is that what Andrew Robb is doing when he uh, has been calling on Wayne Swan to be more realistic about the challenges that the Australian economy is facing? No, not at all. In fact, I think Wayne Swan is guilty of uh, having talked the Australian economy down uh, since the day he became Treasurer. Uh, one of the reasons why business confidence and con consumer confidence are struggling at the moment uh, is because people don't have faith uh, that Wayne Swan and the government know what they're doing. Uh, as a Treasurer, you're meant to be talking up uh, the fundamentals of the Australian economy. Wayne Swan is forever talking them down, uh, forever um, saying that there are dark clouds on the horizon uh, to provide an excuse for him uh, not to get the budget back into surplus. Um, that's what his game plan is. Uh, talk the economy down uh, and then you have an excuse as to why you don't have to do your job and get the budget back into surplus. But that's uh, really having a go both ways, isn't it, Mitch Fifield? Because Andrew Robb's been sending out press releases saying Wayne Swan's being too optimistic, he's not being realistic enough. You're saying he's talking the economy down, whereas in that interview he was very obviously trying to really outline the strengths of the economy. No, I think, I think if you listen to what uh, Wayne Swan was saying, uh, he, he was saying that uh, we're, we're, we're determined uh, to, uh, to get the budget back into surplus. Well, actually, no, we, we hope to. Uh, it's our objective. It's our aim. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, the prospect of falling revenues uh, because of uh, an economic slowdown. So he, he really was trying to set up the scene uh, for another failure to achieve a budget surplus. Andrew Lee, let's bring you in. Um, Mitch Fifield saying there that he thinks Swain Swan's actually talking the economy down and by talking about the challenges we're facing that that's a, a bad thing for the economy and confidence here. Uh, Ashley, the Treasurer is doing exactly the opposite. We have to put our challenges in context. Firstly, we have to realise that uh, Australia has extraordinarily low debt. We have extraordinarily low unemployment by international standards. Uh, it's important to realise that the Coalition has been running around the country saying that debt is a problem. Uh, what they forget is that we took on that debt to save the jobs of 200,000 Australians, to save the jobs of tens of thousands of small businesses. And Wayne Swan's being modest on one point. Euro Money has just ranked him the best treasurer in the world. And they have done that because we put in place that timely, targeted, temporary fiscal stimulus. If we had the Coalition's approach, uh, Australia would not have taken out the global accolades for uh, the best managed economy in the world. And we've, do we've done that in contrast to the way in which uh, many European and uh, North American countries have been run, which has put them into much more substantial problems. Those problems impact on us, but we are starting from an extraordinary position of strength. Low unemployment, low debt, strong growth, great region of the world to be in. Well, we're all looking forward to seeing how the markets do open this morning. We'll keep you updated when that does happen. I do want to move on to the, another issue of uh, pokies and, and gambling reforms. We've seen today that AFL club presidents are going to be, be meeting in Melbourne. They're going to come up with a new campaign to try to fight the government's pokey reforms. Andrew Wilkie has been uh, campaigning, of course, heavily for these reforms. He said that if they don't go ahead, then he might withdraw support from the government. Here he was speaking on it this morning, insisting that he's confident they will still happen. I remain very confident. Um, not only are these uh, well thought out reforms, but uh, at every turn the federal government has done the right thing by me. Um, for Julie Gillard, uh, for Jenny Macklin, uh, this isn't just about honouring an agreement with me anymore. It's about introducing sensible harm minimisation measures. Andrew Lee, the AFL is a, a giant beast, uh, reaches so many members and it will with this campaign, it's planning and it's fair to say that the Labor backbench as well, there are many Labor MPs who are pretty nervous about these reforms. It's one policy that really is uh, acting as a sort of division within the Labor, pa Labor Party, isn't it? Uh, Ashley, I'm not nervous about these reforms because they're the right thing to do. Uh, we are tackling problem gambling because it is a real problem for many Australian households, for people who lose their jobs, their house, their relationship. Uh, who hurt their kids. It is important to deal with the scourge of problem gam gambling in Australia. Uh, it is not right for clubs to be making money out of problem gambling, just as it wouldn't be right 
for clubs to be making money out of selling alcohol to 14-year-olds. We need to cra crack, to crack down on that, uh, and we need to focus on the problem itself, problem gambling. Uh, the question of the, NR the AFL and the NRL, I mean, it is important to realise that some people argued that when tobacco sponsorship of sport was taken away, uh, that these sports would, uh, would, would, would never be the same again. Mm. Uh, that's manifestly been shown not to be true. These are big sports that, frankly, do not rely heavily on, po on poker machines, but even for those local clubs, uh, we have, we're confident they have a bright future. Mitch Fifield, the coalition is being seen to side with the gambling industry on this one. Is that a good look for you? Well, I wouldn't say that we're siding with the gambling industry. What we want to, to look well, you're at not is supporting what these will reforms. actually what what will actually be effective, and we're not convinced that mandatory pre-commitment will be effective, uh, that it will work. Uh, it's important to go back to what the genesis of uh, this policy of the government's actually is. Uh, it came about as a result of Andrew Wilkie saying, "I will not support." the Australian Labor Party unless they sign up to this idea of mandatory pre-commitment. This isn't the idea of the Australian Labor Party. Uh, this was part of the written agreement with Andrew Wilkie. Uh, so there's no conviction here on the part of the Labor Party. This is something that they're simply pursuing because they had to commit to it uh, in order to form government. Uh, and One... in this sort of policy area, it's important that you, you actually look at evidence as to whether a policy will work, you don't simply commit to a policy because you need to do so to get in the government. One final issue before we go today, the Daily Telegraph's uh, front page is screaming that Abbott, Tony Abbott uh, is going on war footing. I would have thought he's been on war footing, Mitch Fyfield, ever since he took over the late Liberal leadership. It, it suggests that he might be more afraid to face Kevin Rudd than Julia Gillard as Prime Minister at the next election. Is that right? Uh, no, uh, to be honest, uh, you know, I couldn't care, we couldn't care uh, who we face, whether it's Julia Gillard or Kevin Rudd. Uh, the problem here uh, isn't who is leading the Australian Labor Party. Uh, the problem is their, their policies, the, that they want to introduce a carbon tax, uh, which will increase cost of living pressures, introduce a carbon tax, uh, which will make it harder for business uh, at a time where, if you listen to Wayne Swan, uh, there's global economic uncertainty. So uh, we're not fussed uh, who it is. Could be Bill Shorten. Who cares? Andrew Lee Wayne Swan said in that interview to me earlier that he believes Julia Gillard will be Prime Minister until the next election and she will win the next election. Is he in denial? Has he not seen the polls lately? Do you really think that Labor is going to win the next election? Absolutely, Ashley, because we're focused on the long-term challenges for Australia. Putting a price on carbon, making sure we get a fair deal for the minerals that are ours, investing in infrastructure. I mean, this is the kind of scare campaign you would expect from an opposition that has utterly run out of ideas and utterly lost any commitment to good economic policy. They're again, they've again said they're not going to go to the independent parliamentary budget office to get their costings done. They'll go to private accounting firms like they did last time with their $11 billion black hole. They're out there attacking economists when they don't get the answer they like on climate change. We saw uh, Bronwyn Bishop walk into parliament this week and attack Ken Henry, uh, a senior treasury bureaucrat who oversaw the introduction of the GST for the Howard government. They're backing away from fuel tax reforms that Peter Costello put in place. And a whole host of issues, the Liberal Party are walking back from reform, and they're just a party of politics, not policy any longer. Well, those leadership rumblings still aren't going anywhere. They've been sticking around for, you for a few weeks, and as you know, as well as I do, once they start, they're very difficult to stop. Andrew Lee and Mitch Fifield, we are out of time for this morning's program. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you. And I will be back with you at this time tomorrow morning. Until then, thanks for your company. I'm Ashley Gillen. See you then.